Software matrix is an important part of software engineering. So before we proceed, let us uh, understand what is the difference between a metric and a measure. Measure is a quantity, uh, this uh, quantity wise or quantitative indication of extent, amount, dimension, capacity or size of some attribute of product or process. It may be any attribute, for example, number of errors. But metric is quantitative measure of degree to which a system component or process possesses a given attribute. Right? This actually metric computes the degree of what attribute a component or process content. That means a handle or guess about a given attribute, like the number of errors found per person, hours expended. So this is the difference be between uh, measure and metric. So uh, metric is not just measuring. So why do we do it? Why do we measure software? Uh, first to determine the quality of the current product or process. What is the quality? Then to predict the quality, find out the quality, predict the quality. And if improvement is needed, we improve the quality of this product or process. Product and process, we'll use them uh, together now. And the motivation for metrics, first of all, estimate the cost and schedule for future products. Then evaluate the productivity impacts of new, of new tools and techniques. Then establish productivity trends over time. Then again, we are coming back to the same thing, improving the software quality and then forecasting our future staffing needs and then anticipating and reducing future maintenance needs. These are all the motivation for metrics. For example, we have defect rates, error rates uh, measured by individual module or during development. So errors should be categorized by your origin type and cost. This is how we compute the defect rates and error rates. Then there are certain classification as far as metrics are concerned. Product metrics, processes metrics, and resource metric. Product matrices uh, or metric, they explicit uh, the explicit results of software development activities, the deliverables, the documentation, and the byproducts. All these are metric of the product. While for the processes, there are activities which are related to the production of software. These are the metric of a process. Then the resources, metric resources. That means input into the software development activities and the inputs and the hardware or knowledge of a pupil. These are the resources, the metric classification. So let us, uh, you know, not confuse between product and process. First, know what are them. First of all, product or process metrics. Process metrics is the insight of paradigm, par process paradigm, software engineering task, work product or milestones while also leading to a long-term in process improvement. As far as product metrics are concerned, we, ass we assess the state of the project, then track potential risks, uncover problem areas, adjust workflow or task, and then evaluate team's ability to control quality. These are the types of measures we generally use, like direct measures for internal attributes, uh, for example, cost, effort, line of code, speed and memory. And for indirect measure, that is for external attributes, we use functionality, quality, complexity, efficiency, reliability and maintainability. Right? There are various size oriented metrics also. For example, size of uh, software produced, line of codes, kilo line of codes, statement line of code. We ignore the white spaces. So the typical measures are errors per kilo line of code, defects per kilo line of code, cost per line of code and documentation pages per kilo line of code. So these are line of code metrics, easy to use, easy to compute and language and programmer dependent. And then complexity metrics are also there like line of code, a function of complexity. So language and programmer dependent is complexity metrics and we have health state software science that is entropy measure for example n1 is the number of distinct operator n2 number of distinct operands n1 total number of operators and n2 total number of operands for example let us take an example this is an example if k is less than 2 and again we go for one more if if k is greater than 3 then some x will be equal to x into this value right now if k is less than 2 it will go inside 
But if k is greater than three, please understand this one because it is saying that if k is less than two, it will go inside. But if k is greater than three, uh, well, this is a very uh, discrete problem which I am taking. So let us uh, go down to the operand, uh, operators and operand first. What are the distinct distinct operators? First of all, we have one, two this 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 these are the distinct operator and what are the distinct operands over which these operators are working 1 and 2 3 and and 4 so we have four distinct operands n1 is what this is 10 n2 is for these are this is 10 oh semicolon i lost semicolon is also, also there so n1 is 10 n2 is 4 n1 is what 13 total number because uh, we are considering 1 2 3 4 okay so in in all we have 13 operators and in all how many we have because this x we have considered just one time here but when we are considering this n we have to compute or cal calculate uh, all of these so these are n1, n2, capital N1, capital N2. So what Halstead matrices say, this is amenable to experimental, experimental verification. Program length will be n, will be n1 plus n2, and program vocabulary will be equal to small n will be equal to small n plus small n2. So the estimated length will be n1 log basis 2, n1 log n1 plus n2 log n2. So this is the close estimate of length for well-structured programs. This, this is the Halstead matrix. The purity ratio is what we have computed uh, this estimated length divided by the total program length. That program uh, complexity can also be computed. The volume will be capital N log N, this small n. Then number of bits uh, to provide unique designator for each of the n items in the program vocabulary is volume. Difficulty can also be computed n1 by 2 into capital N2 by N2. Then program effort can also be computed E is equal to D into V. This V is there, D is there and we have computed this E for just multiplying V and D. So this is a good measure of program understandability. Now, as we have seen this Halstead matrix, let's come to McAbee's complexity measures. McAbee's matrix are based on a control flow representation of the program. Control flow, this is very important, control flow, that is why we are going to a graph now. So program graph is used to depict the control flow and this node represent processing tasks. There are nodes because in a, in a graph, there are various nodes, there are various paths. So node represent this represent the processing tasks means one or more code statements. While the edges in a control graph, if it is like this, these are the processing tasks, one or more code statements, and these edges, these represent control flow between nodes. This is an example, or you can say the notation of flow graph. This is the sequence. This is a while loop. This is if then else or if else and this is until okay until and this is while this is sequence this is how flow graph notation uh, for various uh, sequence we can make or draw so how to compute this cyclometric complexity cyclometric comple complexity computes set of independent paths through the graph that is the basis set so vg where e this this vg is computed by e e is the number of flow graph edges number of flow graph edges this number of edges and n is the number of nodes i'm taking this example so there will be three nodes vg will be equal to p plus one and p is the number of predicate nodes number of predicate nodes so let us take an example this is i equal to 0, yi less than n minus 1, 
we do some j is equal to i plus one then while j is less than this n we do if a i uh, is less than a j then swapping and do i is equal to i plus one okay hope you have understood what this problem problem does okay because this is finding some this is looking to be a some sorting uh, code now this is the flow graph we use while we have used while and we have used this if also so just taking while and uh, this if else from here we can make a this is if else this is while while and finally the result so taking one if and two whiles we can make a flow graph in this we have vg that is what was vg edges minus n plus 2 so edges how many edges are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 there are 9 edges and what is this this was n that is the number of nodes how many nodes are there one two uh, number are there so seven are there seven so what we are finding out we have to find the set of independent paths through the graph that's that is the basis set we have to find what will be the basis set n minus seven plus two is equal to four so vg is what e minus n plus two also vg is p plus one p is the number of predicate nodes so how many predicate nodes are there? Three. How many predicate nodes are there? Actually, uh, this can be computed by number of closed regions. So we have uh, three closed regions exactly. One and uh, this this is whole one. This is two and this is three. This one, this two, and this three. Only three closed regions are there. That is the value we usually put here. So three plus one is four. So in the both in both the ways we can compute the basis set. So basis set will be one seven or one two six one seven one two three four five two six seven because there are four basis set. So we have to find these four. Okay, one to seven directly can go. Then one to six one seven one two. 6, 1 to 6, then 1, and then 7. So, in this way, we have this 4 basis set. Let us take another example. Now, you, I am sure you are able to compute this, right? These are the number of nodes, these are the number of edges. So, just E minus N plus 2, or the closed region, 1, 2, and 3. You have 3 closed region, just 2, 3 plus 1, and you will get the number of uh, you know, you get the basis set and you can go mark this basis set. So, what is the meaning? Vg is the number of region areas of the planar graph, which we have just seen. So, number of region increases with the number of decision pass and loop, as we have seen. There are just two while and one uh, if, and just employing these three, we have achieved four basis sets. So, a quantitative measure of testing difficulty and a, this is an indication of ultimate reliability. This is the meaning of what Maccabes, this cyclometric complexity is all about. So this is Maccabes cyclometric com complexity, which is giving you the quantitative measure of testing difficulty and an indication of ultimate reliability. So, experimental, this data shows that VG should be no more than 10 and testing is very difficult about this value so we have to keep this vg below 10. now we have mcleod's complexity matrix also the complexity is c plus v elstead maccabe and mcleod complexity is c plus v c is the number of comparison in the module v is the number of control variables referenced in the module and this this is actually the decisional complexity this is the decisional complexity. Since uh, say this is similar to Maccabe, but with regard to the control variable, that is why we are using a control variable. So number of comparison and control variable, you will get this Maclure's complexity matrix. Also, matrix and software quality are very much related. We have FURBs. If we talk about software quality, as far as matrix are concerned, 
First is the functionality, that is the feature of the system. Usability, that is the aesthetic sense and documentation of the uh, uh, this Cisco software system. Reliability, that means the frequency of failure and security. Then the performance, that is speed and throughput and the supportability, that is the maintainability. So measures of software quality include correctness, maintainability, integrity, usability. And this, correct net, uh, this correctness is the degree to which a program operates according to the specification. This is the correctness. For example, defects per KLOC and defects uh, is a verified lack of conformance to requirements and failures per hours of operation. This all These all can be computed for the correctness measure. In maintainability, this is the degree to which a program is open to change. This can be computed by mean change, uh, mean time to change, change request to new version and cost to correct. Then we have integrity that is degree to which a program is resistant to outside the outside attack, any other attack uh, apart from that system. So uh, it is computed by fault tolerancy and security and threats. Then this usability that is easiness to use, how much training time skill level necessary to use, increase in productivity and subjective questionnaire or controlled experiment. This is McCall's triangle of quality. This is product revision, product transition and product operation. Okay, McCall's triangle is all. You know, this is just not a triangle. These all have a huge meaning. So let us uh, uh, read out a comment. McCall's quality factors were proposed in 1970s. They are valid today as they were in that time. It's likely that software built to conform to these factors will exhibit high quality well into the 21st century and even if there are dramatic changes in the technology. So this is the quality model. We have a product. We have operation, revision, transition. Under operation, we have reliability, efficiency, and usability. Under revision, we have maintainability and testability. Under transition, we have portability and usability. So these are all over. This is how quality and metrics are so much related. Okay, thank you so much.